Hey, good morning, everyone. Yes, it's Alan with the Spa Association. I'm back again. I am with my good friends Gretchen and another Alan, spelled differently, but I like them anyways, at AM Skyer. They're our main insurance agency. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, thank you. Doing well, thank you. Good. Don't get mad at me because it's 75 and sunny in California, and it's what in Pennsylvania on the other coast? 38 degrees. And foggy. <laughs> okay, but that's a nice 38 degrees, right? You could have been getting the storm they had down in Carolinas, but it didn't happen that we're way. We're just fine, yeah. We're, we're, we're looking, for, yeah. It makes the summer that much more fun. That's the <laughs> okay, hold your breath. Um, we started this morning, even before I started the recorder, we were talking about this thing with sexual harassment because it's not going away, right? And in fact, in the Me Too generation and in, in um, all of the open internet today, it seems like... There's no hiding anything, Alan. Can you address that? Because it, it seems to pop up immediately all the time. Sure. What I would say, I, I've been told often or asked often about how things are different now and what was acceptable in 2017 is no longer acceptable. And I, I try to correct people and state that uh, what happened in 2017, it was never acceptable. It's just now people are more willing to come forward and to do something about it and address it. So therefore the likelihood of dealing with sexual harassment complaints and related issues uh, is gonna be greater and for the foreseeable future. The pendulum may swing back at some point, but right now it's, it's, it's a topic that is on everyone's mind. Alan, what would you tell our, our members? Let me, let me go back to ground zero with this because I, I think it's really critical. If you're in the spa environment, spa salon, whatever it is, and something happens and what what does a therapist do what does a spa director do when they know okay we're in a bad place something not right happened here well what we'll let's first start with how, how we stop that from happening real, real quickly okay and the main thing is in any place of employment is to create a culture inside the employment where people who are potential victims of sexual harassment know that not only are they allowed to come forward but they are encouraged to do so. We want our employees to work in an environment free from sexual harassment, whether it's from co-employees, whether it's from customers, clients, whatever the case may be, and that you will not only not be punished, we affirmatively want you working at your peak efficiency. We have a legal and a moral obligation to you as our employees to do all we can for that to happen. So please, come creating that culture is the first step. Now, what happens is when a complaint is received. There's really two kinds that we're that we're talking about, and let's focus in on this industry. The the there's the traditional quid pro quo sexual harassment. The boss to the subordinate, go out with me, and good things will happen to you. But we're really in, in this industry. I think the, the trickier one is the hostile work environment, and that can be created not just from co-employees, but also from customers and from clients and from vendors. Um, and if a uh, if a, an employer is made aware um, by an employee that something uh, of that nature is happening, where the employee believes it to be sexual harassment, it's an important distinction in this area of the law that the definitions of sexual harassment is a subjective test, not an objective test. It's not a reasonable person where somebody says, he's always putting his arm around my shoulders. And I said, well, it's a friendly gesture. How could, how could that bother you? If the recipient, the victim, feels that he or she is being sexual harassed. And we all know sexual harassment is not just male to female. It can be male to male, female to female, female to female. Um, there's no distinction uh, in the eyes of the law. Uh, if the person being harassed has that feeling, that constitutes sexual harassment. If it's based on anything involving sexual body parts, sexual differences, appearances, that sort of thing. Okay, so what I hear you saying is, say something. Today, right? You, I mean, if you really feel that it's wrong, you still need to say something. But the part one of that, and I really like that you said this, this has to be in the culture of the way that your a facility operates. And that leads me back to asking about a manual because somewhere something should be written that says we have a policy in, in place. And I don't think that that is happening in a lot of facilities today. Absolutely, there needs to be a policy, and the, the, the good news about that is if you would go to the website from the EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, they're going to give you guidelines and sample language and things that you can use, um, which is great because, you know, if I comply, if I do what the, what the regulators tell me to do, I'm going to be in compliance. 
I will say, though, if you have a policy, and you absolutely should, then you must be willing to follow it. The only thing worse than not having a policy is having one and then ignoring it. <laughs> so employees, again, and it's a constant thing. It's not just on your first day of employment. It's something during meetings that needs to be stressed um, that that we we do not want to have this happen. We, we're not going to say, come on, suck it up, get over it. It's a client. He's only there for an hour. You'll never see him again. That, that's, that's not the response. The response is, we'll talk about in a minute in specifics what the employer can do, but the response is, I'm glad you told me, and we will do something about it. Got it. And Gretchen, um, I know we're going to do two parts to this. So I'm going to ask you one question and then we'll, we'll say goodbye to the audience. We'll come back. We'll do a, a, a part two of this when we have time as well. But you guys work across this, the country. AM Skyer has spas and salons and facilities from, from coast to coast. Is it different in different places or is this treated as a one view of what's yeah. going on? Yeah, well, sexual harassment is sexual harassment, but I think Alan can address New York in particular. Right. right. Some states have, all, all states have requirements, uh, laws regarding sexual harassment. The federal government does as well. Two distinctions to remember from state to state. One is that, remember, under the fe uh, currently under federal law, uh, it's an open question as to whether or not sexual harassment involves issues such as sexual identity and sexual orientation. Federal law specifically does not address that, although it has been interpreted at times that sexual harassment includes those areas. Some states, New York, for example, California, are going to be more vigilant in enforcing those aspects of sexual harassment and specifically provide for that. New York in particular, and there are some other states, and I think others will soon follow suit, have very specific laws about what kind of training employers must provide to their employees regarding sexual harassment avoidance, sexual harassment complaints, what to do about it. There's, it must be an interactive type of training. There are specific complaint forms that they must utilize. Uh, the law was passed last year and was supposed to go into effect January of 2019. Uh, the, the, the state government did a very wise thing and, and postponed um, the, the drop dead uh, deadline for that until October 9th of 2019. And in response to some of the questions and, and inquiries they got, developed very specific guidelines for compliance. They, I must say they did a great job. And if you go to a website in New York, if you Google New York State sexual harassment laws, it'll take you right to it. And it gives us very specific, gives the documents that you need. It gives videos to help train you to do this. It gives you frequently asked questions and answers. They really did a, a, an admirable, uh, an admirable job. And coming from me to say that about a government entity, that's that's my opinion. <laughs> well, and there's no doubt in my mind that um, people should reach out to AM Skyer because you guys obviously have a handle on this, and you have to have a handle on this. this there's no slip sliding away if you're a facility. So I, I'm thinking we probably could do uh, eight episodes on this, but we'll start with a couple anyway. So. It's Gretchen and Alan at AM Skyer, and I thank you guys for the time this morning, and I'm gonna look forward to doing another one of these with you as well. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Alan.